Well, we definitely knew it was going to be big. That was that was kind of uh, one of the things that excited me as a meteorologist to see a, a track where it curves back towards the coast. It was very low pressure. Some of the, uh, in fact, the, the lowest pressure we've ever recorded in Canada. When you have uh, the lowest pressure on record, you know it's going to have big impacts over a large area. We'd never seen that much concentration of extreme devastation like that. There were trees down everywhere. There were traffic lights ripped down, lots of flooding. My vehicle uh, was partly submerged. There was debris everywhere, downed trees across the street from the hotel. If you had a GPS or a map, you just throw it out the window because there were so many trees that had fallen over top of uh, houses and streets that you turn one way and then you have to back up. There are big boulders that separate the beach coastline and the road. And it was just, it was just lapping over and hitting cars. We saw a, a smattering of buildings, houses as it turned out, that were in smithereens and in, in many cases swept out to sea. It really became clear just how bad the island had been hit. The storm surge and the wind completely decimated some of the, the famous sand dunes and changed the actual coastline forever. Every single block you would find that there was some amount of damage and that damage was more than damage it was a loss to somebody uh, and there was a campground that just had had been overtaken by water trailers had been destroyed and i spoke with this one woman who called it her home away from home and and the community there was all helping each other um, pick up the pieces the cottage of, of this couple and the roof had blown entirely off it was an absolute mess inside they were so sweet about it. They, you know, oh, sure, like, uh, I don't know, let me talk to my wife. Dear, what do you think about doing an interview? Oh, yeah, sure, that's fine. You know, and, and like, I think everyone handled it as well as they could, but in this case, you know, that couple was just happy go lucky given the circumstances. But then, of course, you also saw the, the devastation and the true day to day impact. I talked about the guy who had the maple farm. He spoke, it was a family business. He had been doing it, I think, for 30 years himself. And just knowing how long it takes to grow a maple tree, I think he said it was like, you know, 50 to 100 years until they can tap these trees. This was his livelihood. He was saying, you know, I'll never see these, these trees tapped again in my lifetime. And that just really resonated for me. Uh, the woman in, in this uh, little community a little further down the coast from Port of Basque was standing there looking at her home which was destroyed by the storm surge and yet unprompted by us just came out with I'm gonna move on from this and I'm not moving backwards I'm moving forward there's resilience and there's you know a positive attitude by and large the people we encountered uh, about you know at least we survive and, and the house can and it will be replaced. A woman and her family, um, they happen to you know, be able to have uh, their generator up. She opened her doors to people in and around the area to just come in and have a free meal. The idea that someone in this kind of a situation um, could just find it within themselves to create that space for people was something that absolutely will resonate with me for a very long time. I met a couple who they were, I think this was probably a week after, they couldn't leave the house because of the tree that was downed right in their driveway. Like the dominoes of everything that could go wrong for this couple did. One was a recovering cancer patient, um, the other just had eye surgery and could be going blind. So appointments were necessary for them. The woman, she was super sweet but she, she broke down. Understandably so. I, I mean, she said, I don't know how much more of this we can take. The sort of sense of betrayal people felt, their families had lived by the water in Port of Basque for generations. There were people we interviewed who said, you know, basically, yeah, I, I am a climate change believer now. I can't believe this happened and I'm not moving back here. Everybody was experiencing the lows of, you know, not having power and the unknown of when they were going to get their next hot meals. We were going through that with these individuals and they were just so sweet and hospitable. And I think it is that overwhelming sense of resilience that you see, especially being that this was my first time in Nova Scotia. It left an impression on me that is there for good.